uh, I, I uh, am proposing to start from uh, stop fake because uh, it will give us a broader understanding uh, about collective narratives. Uh, as I know, it's based on more than uh, 50, uh, more than 500 uh, propagandistic uh, articles and uh, uh, created uh, the list of narratives by uh, our team. Uh, Alexander, the floor is yours, and I know you have a very interesting infographics to share with us. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. Yes, I have infographics, but I, I, I need to ask you to show it because I have no electricity, so that's why I, I, I'm using my mobile phone. Yeah, Actually, no. that's, why, that's why I thought that this was a mute button. That's why, sorry for the interruption of the, uh, no of the speaker. I don't know. Okay, yeah. But yeah, you you may you you have you have your time. Don't worry. Yeah, I just want to uh, represent myself. I'm a fact checker of Stop Fake organization. We debunk Russian propaganda since 2014, and uh, throughout these years, we've already debunked nearly 7,000 Russian fakes. And I joined this program, uh, sorry, project uh, two years ago, and. Uh, this was very good timing because Russia was preparing for the full scale invasion, as we all understand now, and we also were the ones who, uh, you know, uh, were battling on the information field, uh, starting from 24th of February, and of course we were uh, uh, checking how the Russian narratives might change, but it seems like, you know, what we have now the analysis we created based on 500 false messages we analyzed uh, throughout the last uh, nine months. Russian narratives haven't changed much. Uh, it seems like, you know, so w th there are some points that, of course, now because of the full scale invasion uh, represented uh, more than the others. But uh, if we if we try to uh, mm, describe what is Russia doing now. This is like uh, the main narrative is to convince Europe and uh, the rest of the world that actually they restore the truth, uh, restore the uh, justice and they liberate people. And also, of course, they keep uh, saying that Ukraine is a failed state and uh, this, the Western support will end. So uh, in any case, uh, people will be disappointed and it's better to join Russia sooner or later. Uh, but better sooner than later. Uh, I was writing down some notes, actually very interesting, because what you have on Balkans about this uh, religious uh, propaganda uh, was uh, very much represented in Ukraine as well. And it's like, you know, it describes the Russian religious model on um, spreading the propaganda, saying that they are, this is like a holy war. Um, in this stage of war, we have this narrative as well, because now they, this is um, obvious that Russia is losing the war uh, on the field, on the battlefield. So they now try to appeal to their audience inside of Russia, saying that this is a holy war for our identity. So if you lose this war, we will lose our country. Um, and here, that's important to understand that there are a couple of uh, audiences Russia works with. Uh, this is like Russians inside of Russia, Russian soldiers. It's a, a separate audience. Also, Ukrainians inside Ukraine and Ukrainian soldiers uh, and Europeans and the rest of the world. Um, they also want to demoralize people, of course, in Ukraine and in Western countries, saying that uh, you can defeat Russia. This is just impossible. And in Ukraine, you see, we go, we are going through the uh, blackouts and uh, they directly saying that this is for, uh, you know, the, uh, the instrument of terror. Uh, so people could revolt uh, against uh, their, uh, those who are in power as President Zelensky and the authorities. And uh, if, you, if you see on these infographics, um, we uh, debunked, like, as I told you, like based on 500 false messages, we are now counting uh, nearly 18 narratives. Uh, and you see that um, they are more or less present all the time in the Russian media, and they try also to push it forward to uh, European media, and of course in Ukraine. But since uh, to, uh, 24th of February, we are more, we became more aware what is what is Russia because this is uh, an enemy, and of course uh, the media literacy we were uh, providing throughout these years, the last eight years, also was helping us much. 
So we are now quite uh, resistant in case if we, if you speak about the uh, uh, the Ukrainian society, but not all the European countries are resistant in in the same way. And of course, we are we now live in an unpredictable times, and the public opinion can be also very vague. So in some countries in Western Europe, of course, and of course in Balkans as well, uh, we see that people are changing their minds throughout the time. So if we compare like their public opinion, let's say, you know, the latest one I, I've checked was the German uh, survey made by SEMAS, uh, and they compared what people were think, thinking in, uh, in spring and this autumn, and actually more Germans now think that uh, this war was caused by the NATO aggression and NATO threat uh, towards Russia, which is actually, of course, not true because Russia was planning this invasion. But people just they just don't you know they don't remember what sometimes what was the reason and how all that uh, were going on in, in spring because this is not their war. Let's say they of course feel the circumstances, the economic pressure on European countries, demographic pressure, etc. We have the refugees from Ukraine, but they somehow they just forget what what, what is the reason. And uh, of course, last uh, the, the main points of Russian propaganda now is to discredit Ukraine, as I said, uh, saying that uh, Ukraine is shelling its own people, abandoning the territories, and uh, you know there are plenty of NATO um, troops in Ukraine fighting um, instead of Ukrainians, because again, this is a narrative of the Holy War. Um, because like Western countries trying to defeat Russia, th this is what actually Russian authorities are saying now. Um, and this, this is how they try to engage their people and uh, uh, to move them to the front lines, right? Um, what I would like to mention is the, uh, uh, of course, all that is, was prepared beforehand because of the technological gap and the lack of resources and uh, that Russia uh, had before and now it's it's uh, obvious for the whole world and uh, you know the previous speaker was saying about the uh, reflexive control and grasp of doctrine and of course this is what they were planning to do with Ukraine because the invasion uh, they were not prepared for the large-scale war and they had to uh, the uh, to uh, proceed with their informational war and hybrid warfare um, so now, of course, when we know that the Russia is evil, uh, we don't, we, we, we just don't consume Russian media. And actually, this is one of the main points of how uh, Europeans need to protect themselves. Of course, they need to eliminate Russian propaganda because this is a warfare. They need to eliminate it in their information space and uh, raise the media literacy. This is what Stoptech is doing as well. We, we do a lot of courses and trainings in, for Ukrainians and for Europeans already. Uh, and people need to be more resistant and they need to understand where the truth and where is not. Uh, of course, this is hard when you are not, when you don't have connections with Ukraine and Russia, right? So uh, there are, that's why we need to raise the uh, uh, public activists. And fact, they may be not only fact checkers, of course. I'm sorry, this is my mobile phone. Okay, yeah. Um, and this will have the significant influence, I think, because if, if you compare the um, uh, the output, input, I'm sorry, that European Union is doing right now in, in fighting against Russian propaganda, you know, the uh, I was checking the uh, uh, the visit, visitors, the views of the UVC Disinfo website, which is a Stratcom uh, service for debunking Russian propaganda. And they have like 150,000 visitors per month. But the uh, total audience of the Russia Today is 190 million view viewers per month, which is like 100 times more than you will be citizen for and other resources. And of course, European Union needs to be aware about that because without fighting with Russian propaganda, I'm not sure that uh, European institutes uh, can survive because all that, of course, is uh, influencing uh, the populist parties uh, take, take the power, take in, into powers uh, in Europe. And we don't know the, the, the circumstances, the consequences of that. Uh, Okay, what I would love to mention also is, 
I, I hope you you had the chance to check the infographics because I I, I know the narratives, but I don't see them right clear, quite clear because I'm, I'm from a mobile phone. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Um, so you can see that, that the the uh, um, the outcome of that the brief outcome. So uh, top five are like fakes against the EU and uh, countries and the USA. With, why it's so important for Russia? Because they again saying that this is a holy war and or the uh, European countries are corrupted as well. They want to defeat Russia. They only want to take out all the resources from Ukraine. This is a neo imperialism of the of the West. So even you know that the amount of fakes that we debunk uh, on this topic is more than uh, like the Russian fakes, uh, Rus Russian fake victories, for example or uh, like discrediting President Zelensky, let's say. But uh, all other narratives are, are very important as well. We, we can't say that uh, this is like something that Russia don't pay attention, doesn't pay attention to. Yes, they, they do. And uh, discrediting Ukraine in the world and the armed forces of Ukraine is one of the uh, main points that they do right now because they want to uh, cut uh, the uh, Western supplies to Ukraine and the arms supplies to Ukraine, of course, and to demoralize Ukrainian people, saying that our army won't win anyway. And if, Mariana, you can show me, uh, show to the audience the second slide, please. Yeah, sure. One second. Okay. Yeah. So another one is from another project I, I take part. It, it is called InfoCrime. It's supported by Thomson Reuters and in, in Institute of Mass Information in Ukraine. So we were uh, also analyzing the local media uh, landscape. Uh, our team was analyzing the Odessa region, which is a uh, Russian speaking region, let's say, in general. And uh, the interesting thing here is to combine how actually the Russian propaganda narratives, uh, they, they are divided into different topics, right? Uh, we were analyzing this for three months from July to September 2022. So we just finished with that. And as you see, the majority of it, so we, were we, we took 100 false messages. The majority of fakes uh, that were spread in uh, Odessa region, mainly throughout social media, because actually now our uh, traditional media, they are, of course, they don't spread Russian propaganda. Uh, before that, we had such cases because sometimes they were paid for that. Sometimes they were citing the pro-Russian politics and they were saying like, okay, this is like a, a citation. So we have nothing to do with that. But this is mainly, of course, uh, we, we gather that throughout the uh, Telegram channels, uh, Facebook group, right? Uh, here is where Russian propaganda is, is uh, m very powerful, uh, social medias. I think that in your countries, that's, that is, is well the, the main pain point. Of course, as I heard the answer from Serbian speaker uh, from Drago that, um, in Serbia, actually, plenty of media, they, they spread Russian propaganda. In Ukraine, that is not the case anymore. But we also have like marginalized media that uh, are established by pro-Russian uh, like pro -Russian agents or actors or influencers here. Sometimes they try to do this, but now it's not so easy. So mostly they move to social media and all that we were gathered, uh, we gathered in the social media. So as you see, the majority of fakes that they try to feed the population of Odessa region in Ukraine, they are related to war. Uh, so here we can say that they try to demoralize uh, people saying that uh, the, the, the Ukrainian army won't win. Also, they say that uh, they will be cut off uh, of, from the resources from Western countries. Uh, they also say uh, spread fakes about the Russian victories, uh, saying that, for example, like Russia, uh, it was before actually Ker Kherson was liberated. They were saying like Russians there, uh, they, they will never leave the region and uh, they are actually planning the uh, offensive uh, towards Mykolaiv, et etc. So, and also we have these... Um, uh, Transnistria region where Russian forces also are located and they were saying that uh, from this part also we will have the offensive on the Odessa region. Uh, so all that of course is uh, very important uh, because uh, you know sometimes people they, they try even though they don't want to 
uh, consume Russian propaganda, but they want to know the alternative uh, opinion or information. And somehow, anyway, they subscribe to these channels and groups and they consume all that. And then they try to find the truth, something between those two, uh, those, those two sources, like uh, those who tell them the official information, right? And those who try to uh, feed them with some insights. Also, there were a lot of fakes about the domestic politics. We say that this is a discreditation of our government and local authorities, saying that they are not effective, they are corrupted. Uh, they sell the arms to uh, different governments and countries. Uh, they don't really support Ukrainians, they abandon the Ukrainian territories, they are neglective towards our uh, army, uh, all that, you know, because they try to ruin the unity in Ukraine. Um, and, um, you know, our people are now quite resilient, but this is, this is how they also try to influence them. Also, there were fakes about international politics and social issues and the economy, say, like, creating the forecast that Ukraine won't survive this winter, for example. Why is it, it is important to verify what is, what is uh, going on on the national level and the local level? We see from there that actually the narratives are quite uh, equal. So, uh, mean like, while Russia is pushing uh, their traditional narratives on the national level, right, and to the international level, to into the world, they are doing quite the same on the regional levels. And also the, the, uh, the, the latest topic, for example, the energy crisis in Ukraine, they are now trying to, uh, again, to tie apart our population, saying that you look in this, um, in this region, we have electricity, in that region, we don't have electricity. Why is that? Because like Kiev is more important to Ukrainian authorities than Odessa, for example, because now Odessa is in, in, in blackout and the situation is uh, quite tough uh, and they will do that all the time and I think that if you for example check uh, if you have the opportunity to check well, how Russia really influence uh, you know Serbia or Montenegro on the national level and maybe how they try to find uh, these regional differences and try to uh, um, you know influence influence people on the local level you will have a lot of parallels. And this is also for understanding how Russian propaganda machine is working. They, they allocate a lot of resources and pay a lot of money to their propagandists, uh, to their warfare, to trolls and bots on social media, right? And uh, yeah, I, I think that, I think that um, this is more or less what, uh, what I was, I, I wanted to share with you. And if you have some questions about how we combat all that and how we understand wh 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 what is Russia doing and how we even sometimes predict the fakes, what they will try to create, you, 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 you may, you may ask, uh, um, ask your questions. Thank you.